Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a walkthrough of an exercise from Zed Shaw's book, Learn Python the Hard Way. You can get to it for free at learnpythonthehardway.org, and then click on this link, read the free HTML online. That'll take you to the table of contents here. And in this exercise, we're gonna be looking at number 17 called More Files. And if you click on that, it's gonna take you right here. Now, this is where we're going to be reading a file and copying its contents to another file. Again, it seems like a really elementary operation, but when you start working with large data sets coming in from several different sources, you do this stuff a lot. And so it's, it's really handy to know how to do it and how to do it quickly and automatically without having, for instance, to go to Word, open a file, click it open and save it and save as, and that's a pain. Uh, this, is the, this is the text that we're gonna enter into our script. So I'm gonna open up Text Wrangler. I've got it open right here. Uh, use Text Wrangler if you're on a Mac, that's what Zed wants, but any text editor will work. And on a Windows PC, Zed recommends Notepad++, which is, which is actually a real favorite for coding. But here we go. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to do two imports. Now, previously we have done one. This first one from sys import argv imports the argument variable, which lets us, which lets us specify some information here in the command line when we call the Python script. We're gonna actually put in there the name of the file that we're copying from and the name of the file that we're copying to. Also, we're gonna use this other little piece of information. We're gonna go to OS path from OS path, import something called exists. It, again, what we're importing here is a small amount of code that lets us do something that would be more difficult to do otherwise. Let me get back to where I was. Um, now, OS path is an interesting one because we're going to be specifying a file path and different operating systems. For instance, I'm on a Mac. You might be on a Windows PC. If you're running a server, you'll be using Linux. Um, there are other choices. Each of these operating systems spells out the location to a file in different ways. Sometimes these backslashes or forward slashes or colons or, or who, you know, who knows what. And so OS path is a, is a flexible way Python is able to tell what operating system it's in and then specify the file in the appropriate manner. And it exists, that's actually what we're bringing in from that particular library or collection of code, exists as a function that returns true if the file path is valid. So I'm going to specify a file. So either, actually two things have to be true. Both the file has to exist, which is the real purpose of it, but you also have to have what are called permissions, or it has to be possible for you to read or write the file. Uh, if, if those are not both true, then you'll get a false. If it's either not there or you don't have permissions, it returns false. All right, these are the things that are gonna go into the argument variable. And again, that's what happens when we're up here and we type in Python, we then type in the name of the script. That's the first thing. The second one is going to be the file from which we are copying text. And then the third thing is the file to which we are copying the text. So that all goes in there. And you just specify that when you run the, the, uh, the command in Python. All right, it's gonna print out some, or rather it's gonna display some information in the console. It's gonna say copying from, and then this is gonna be, it's gonna give us the name of the file from which we're copying because we specified it right here and it knows that that's what that means to the other file that we specified right here and it knows what that means. All right, now we're gonna do these other things. We're gonna take the from file and we're gonna open it. Okay, that's easy. And we're gonna take its information and stick it into a variable or an object called in file. Great, that's easy, right? And, um, then we're gonna take that and we're gonna use, so now we got this object in file and the dot here, the dot operator says, do something to that object. And in this case, that's, that's the variable or that's holding the text that we just read. And it says, read it. Well, that's, that's pretty obvious. This opened it, this reads it. And this, by the way, is kind of a funny thing. You need to have the empty parentheses here because a function needs parentheses as a space for arguments. We don't have any arguments that we need to put in, but you need to have the parentheses. It's, anyhow, it says, go to the object in file, which we just created right here, read it, and put that text into another object or variable called in data. All right, cool. 
And Zed says, by the way, you could do these two things in one line and ask how would you do it? Well, you know, just to give away an answer, this is how you would do it right here. All you would do is this stuff right here, this is equal to in file. So you just copy that and you paste it in right there. And that does it in one line. On the other hand, you need to know that if you do it that way, you're going to have another command at the bottom. It's called infile.close. You need to remove that or you'll get an error message. Um, just a, a little quirk. Um, then, you know, for whatever reason, just because uh, we're going to get a little bit of information about how many bytes there are in the file that we just read. That's actually what this thing does here. L-E-N is for length, length of the file in bytes. Um, these are tiny text files, so it's going to be real small. There may be situations where you want to use that, but it's certainly not necessary here. All right, then it's going to display on the console, does the output file exist? And then it's going to stick in a true or a false. And it's going to do that by using this function, which we imported up here. See that? And it's going to be going to to file. And it's asking, so it's trying to find out whether the file that we are writing to already exists. Now, in my case, it does not. You see, I do not. I have a from text. Here's my from text file. It's my same little made a haiku by Ron Padgett that I used a minute ago, uh, in the last video. But I don't have a to file. So, and for me, the answer there is false. It does not exist. Does it exist? It'll say yes or no. And then ready, you can just hit return. And this is just going to read whether you hit return or control C. Then what it's going to do is it's going to take the to file and it's going to open it. If it doesn't exist already, it's going to create it. The W means make it so you can write to it. The default is read only. And so if you want to be able to write something to it, you have to tell that. You could also do append or some other things. And then create an object called out file. And then take the in data. That's what we did right here. That's what the object that we got by reading the data from the from file. Take the in data and write it to the out file. Okay, so it's a little, it's a little, uh, you know, convoluted, but everything connects. And then it'll say, "All right, all done." Now, um, then you need to clean up a little bit. We have uh, two files that are currently open, or two objects that are available for operations: out file and in file. And you got to close them or else you might do something with them accidentally later on. You could get screwed up. Keep in mind that if you did the one line version of this, then you can remove this thing in file because um, you didn't leave it open. Um, finally, I'm just going to mention Zed leaves as a sort of uh, exercise for the reader. Can you do this entire program in a single line? The answer is yes. The way you do that, by the way, is you know you've, you've got these uh, these breaks these these new line breaks those are meaningful in Python. You can um, substitute semicolons for those, and so and also you end up with a really long line. And you can delete all the comments and you can delete the commentary stuff and just leave in the the functional stuff. And I'm sure you can make it a little more uh, concise than this by I'm I'm repeating a couple of things, but. I'll show you how that one works also. Okay, so, by the way, this is in a comment right now because I don't want it to run in this particular script. I've got another script that has that information. So that's exercise 17. Let's come over here and get it, ready? What I need to do is um, I'm already focused on my scripts directory, that's where I am. See, that's scripts right there. That's my command prompt and right here at the blinking cursor, I'm gonna type in Python, then exercise ex17.py. That's the name of my file, right? See, there's the text. ex17.py is the one that's open right here. And then I have to specify a couple of things. Remember, I have to specify the from file and the to file. My from file is this one. I've called it from.txt. It's got these three lines from a haiku in it. So I'm going to do like this. I'm going to go ex17 from.txt. That tells it where to read it. And, you know, the fact that I called it ex17 underscore from, that's arbitrary. Call it whatever you want. And this is just convenient for me. And I can get away with giving just the name because it's in my working directory. 
Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the file to send it to. I'll go ex17 underscore, whoops, two, txt. Please note that file does not exist. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to hit return. And it says copying from ex17 from dot text to ex17 to dot text. The input file is 68 bytes long. You know, it's only three short lines of text. Does the output file exist? False. You see, it does not exist. And if we look down here, there is no ex17 underscore two. But watch what happens as soon as I hit return here. I hit return and voila. Now it's there and it has the same text as my from. And it says, all right, all done. We're done with that. I am going to show you, however, what it looks like if you use a single line command. I've got this other file right here. Let me just uh, click that open. And this is, I'm going to make it a little bigger here. This is one where I've just put it all in a single line, removed all the comments and all the little commentary that it gives us. So that's all there. And what I need to do now, so I'm going to call that one. Oh, by the way, I just pressed the up arrow. When, I, when you do the up arrow, it goes to your you know, previous commands. And then I'm just going to modify this one. I have it called one line dot text. And I'm going to have it uh, read from the same thing, but I am going to write it to something else. I'll just call it write to one line. Okay, so that's another one that does not exist. So I'm going to come right here and I'm going to hit return. Now it's, it's just going to zoom through and do the whole thing. It's not going to prompt for me or anything. Please note that the two one line does not exist. Anyhow, I come right here, I hit return, boom. And it's done. That just did it with no prompting at all. I just specify my stuff, I hit return, it does it, and I've got my result right there in my directory. Anyhow, that's it for exercise 17. We'll be coming back to this stuff frequently. And so I hope you're able to work it out until it makes sense, and I look forward to seeing you in the next exercise.